where they were using lobotomies to returning World War II vets. That's right. You're having a problem because you were put in a Japanese prisoner of war camp for three years? Well, we're going to make your life hell here on Earth in America until we drive those memories out. I mean, that was the kind of treatment that they were giving them, which in retrospect is not just horrible and cruel, but just amazingly, amazingly stupid. It's like putting leeches on somebody who is suffering from a disease. But as I said, we're going to talk about what DARPA wants to do in the future. But let's cover some of the other breaking news that's happening in this segment here. We've got uh, Venezuela is enforcing fingerprint registry in order to buy groceries. This is a report that's up on InfoWars right now. is written by uh, Daisy Luther, the organic prepper. What if you were forced to register in order to buy groceries? And what if, through that registration, the food you bought could be tracked and the quantities could be limited? Or maybe they could come back and confiscate what you've already bought. Well, that's exactly the plan in Venezuela right now. She writes, the AP reports an effort to crack down on hoarding. They're giving ID cards to families, and they will have to be presented before food can be purchased. And she says, you think that this isn't going to happen in America? Well, already the Obama administration has moved the pieces into place on the board to be able to appropriate supplies from anyone at any time, as we've covered in the past from Max Slavo of SHTF Plan. And, uh, you know, that's what we see over and over again. We see the infrastructure of tyranny being put into place. The infrastructure that has been put into place with the NDAA, with Homeland Security, with the Viper teams, with TSA, with all these different aspects. And now we see them actually starting to activate it. We see them breaking into people's homes. And, of course... This really goes back to the war on drugs, the SWAT team stuff, the idea that they would do no-knock raids, the idea that they could confiscate anything that they declared to be contraband illegally. During the war on drugs, they were, try they were putting charges against airplanes, against cash, not against the people. They were, it was the U.S. versus Learjet, the U.S. versus $9,000 in cash. And in the cash case, you had a, a black man who was in a nursery business, and he was flying from one place to another place to pick up a large truckload of things that he was going to drive back for his nursery business, and he had $9,000 in cash to pay for it. And they discovered this, and this is like 20 years ago during the, the uh, war on drugs. They discovered the $9,000 of cash, and they just confiscated it. He had a perfectly good reason. They had no evidence that he was going to use it for drugs, no reason to believe that he was going to use it for drugs. But once they saw that he had the cash, they just took it and they they, they created a case, uh, the U.S. government versus $9,000 in cash. Another case where he had a guy who had ferried people for what he thought was just a business meeting in his private plane, his private jet. He ferried them from the U.S. to Canada. They met with some people and he brought them back. They were just carrying briefcases. Well, it turns out that was part of a drug deal. What the feds did was they confiscated his plane. Now, they knew that he was not any part of the drug deal. They knew they couldn't prove that he had anything to do with it because they knew that he wasn't involved in it. He was just an innocent, essentially a taxi driver. They confiscated his plane, which is essentially confiscating his business. They destroyed him financially because of that. And, of course, they charged the plane with being an accessory to the drug transaction because they couldn't make the case stick against the man. They charged the inanimate object. Any government that is capable of that kind of Kafkaesque sophistry can come in and confiscate your food. And as he points out, think about the fact that now everything that you're buying is already being tracked with these rewards programs, right? The government could go back in and pull that information up if they wanted to. In more news, we see that the IMF is warning that we're going to have global stagnation if Ukraine is not bailed out. You didn't realize that that was going to create a global collapse if uh, we didn't bail out the Ukraine, did you? Yes, that's the baloney that Christine Lagarde is feeding everybody. This is a story from Kurt Nemo that was up yesterday, came up late yesterday. Christine Lagarde has recycled the bankster mantra that the globalists pushed for a bailout of the Ukraine. She says geopolitical tensions in the Ukraine could cloud the global economic future. Well, that sounds bad. And it could have broader spillover implications. That's right. 
the Ukraine now is going to take down the entire world economy if the bankers don't bail them out. And of course, who's going to pay for that? The poor people of the Ukraine. As he points out in the article, she didn't mention that the IMF package will, what it'll do to the average Ukrainian. <laughs> it's going to be an austerity program like they've seen in Italy and elsewhere. And people are rebelling to the point of secession in Italy over the austerity programs that were imposed by globalist bankers. We're going to be back with more news, and we're going to have a review of Captain America at the bottom of the hour with the InfoWars staff. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Honey, look, I'm getting jerky with it. You're getting what? Getting jerky with it. I'm getting jerky at jerkyspot.com. They've got over 100 delicious jerkies to choose from, like crunchy maple bacon jerky, cranberry jalapeno, and even liquor-infused beef jerky. Go to jerkyspot.com today and save $5 on your first order. Use the code TRYJERKYSPOT. Jerkyspot.com. It's all your favorite jerky in one spot. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Great news, pure water lovers. BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com has a special discount offer for all GCN listeners. You can't do better than a Big Berkey for economy. For only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. There's none better than a Big Berkey for emergency preparedness as a backup water source. And you just can't beat a Big Berkey to remove dangerous chlorine, all types of fluoride, pathogenic bacteria, cysts, parasites, and unhealthy viruses products from municipal water. Berkey water filter systems are even powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. For the gold standard in water filters, get a Big Berkey at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And all GCN listeners get 5% off all ceramic filter systems. For details, call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey water filters for the love of clean water. Hi there. My name is Frank Bates. What I'm about to tell you in the next 60 seconds could get me in a lot of trouble. I just created a free video presentation at 123coverup.com that exposes the electricity monopolies and government agencies for what they really are. Incompetent, lying crooks that are counting on your ignorance and fear to keep your power bills criminally high. Some have called this a conspiracy. Others have called it a cover-up, and you will be shocked to find out how deep the conspiracy goes. My video at 123coverup.com exposes the truth and shows you the secret of how I beat them and how you can beat them too. Watch the controversial video that thousands of other smart patriots have already seen in the last three months. Go to 123coverup.com and discover one weird trick to slash your power bill and protect your home. Go watch my video now at 123coverup.com before they force me to shut it down. Again, that's 123coverup.com. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. Pienso que un sueño para sido no volverá más Y me pintaba las manos y la cara de azul Y de provisa el viento rápida me debo Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host, and I'm going to be joined in the next segment 
with the InfoWars crew, and they're going to have a review for you of Captain America. It brought up some real interesting questions as we looked at the trailer. I think it's probably one of the most anticipated movies of the year. We are not going to spoil it for you. I haven't seen it myself, but I do want to kind of... I'm, I'm curious as to how this fits in the liberty spectrum. Now, I was just going over some economic news before we went to the break, and there's a couple of other pieces here I want to cover with you. Shocking facts about the deindustrialization of America that everyone should know. This is from Infowars.com today. It's an article by Michael Snyder. And he's pointing out what, what triggered this article is the fact that the U.S. trade deficit jumped in February. Uh, climbed to the highest level in five months in February. It was 7.7% higher than in January. This is money that is bleeding out of America. As he points out in the opening statement, he said, how, can, how long can America continue to burn up wealth? How long can this nation continue to consume far more wealth than it produces? And he goes through in the article, he says, we sold $122 billion worth of stuff to China. It sounds like a lot, but we bought from them $440 billion worth of things. And he shows the trade deficit with just China going from 1990 until currently, where it is now $318 billion trade deficit with China. $318 billion trade deficit. That's larger than the gross domestic product of many, many countries. And he says it's been estimated that the U.S. economy loses approximately 9,000 jobs for every $1 billion of goods that are imported from overseas. And one last statistic I'll give you. He says, since 2001... The United States has lost more than 56,000 manufacturing jobs. Well, it's not just from attacks abroad, from trade deficits with other countries like China that we are being bled to death. We're also being bled to death with mandates from our federal government. Somebody has to pay for these Obamacare mandates. It's going to be coming out of the pockets of the people who are buying insurance or their employers who are going to be buying insurance for them. And it is, as we pointed out over and over again, it is a huge increase. Anywhere up to five times people are seeing their insurance policies go up. Now we learn from the article from National Journal that 15 to 20 percent of the people aren't paying their Obamacare premiums. That's news from Blue Cross Blue Shield, one of the biggest players in Obama's exchanges. They're saying that 15 to 20 percent of the new customers aren't paying for their first premiums, which means that they're not actually covered. So even if we can believe these figures that the Obama administration is putting out, and there's a lot of reason not to believe anything they say, because we've seen not just the Obama administration, but every administration always puts out unemployment figures they will put them out one quarter and then they'll revise them the next quarter. And they're constantly changing these things to make the current situation always look better. So they revise it, uh, the, the bad news, they revise upward from earlier periods so they, they can make current stuff look better. And of course, he's taking it to all new levels. He's not just talking about the creation of jobs, which the federal government doesn't create jobs. Okay, private sectors, individuals create jobs. All they do is create bureaucracies, which are a drain on the productive part of the economy. But he's taken it to a new level where he says, these are jobs saved. Now, you can just make up any number you want to to put in that. So when we see that kind of nonsense coming out of the federal government, when they start talking to us about how many people have signed up for Obamacare, can we really trust that? Now, the government has given us the number that it's about uh, 7 million people that have signed up. But if you apply this across the board, because Blue Cross Blue Shield is not located in any one particular area, they're pretty much across the United States. So their figures are likely to be pretty much the experience across the country. So if 15 to 20% of the people are not paying their premiums, which means that they're not insured, that would take, even if you go with Obama's number of 7 million people, that would take it down to about 6 million people that they say are covered. Out of about 350 million, is that something that we should be excited about? 2% coverage? Is that something that is, uh, <laughs> is really great news? Now, one last uh, bit of news before we go to the break here. There was a great piece from Andrew Sullivan, uh, dish.andrewsullivan.com. He called it the hounding of a heretic. And he talks about how homosexuals lobbied to get a Mozilla executive fired. He said the guy who had the gall to express his First Amendment rights and favor Proposition 8 in California by donating $1,000 has just been scalped by some gay activists. 
He says, will he now be forced to walk through the streets in shame? If this is the gay rights movement today, hounding our opponents with a fast fanaticism, more like the religious rights.